Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode one of the Print On Demand Playbook Podcast. We are so excited to have you guys here. In this episode, we're actually going to uh, touch on a lot of different topics, everything from our origin stories, why we teamed up for the podcast, and what you can expect. There is a lot of juicy nuggets in this podcast. We talk about everything from leaving your job, leaving your comfortable job, uh, quitting your job with a family to go all in on entrepreneurship and about a lot of the kind of the struggles that led to our now success, which still we continue to struggle with a lot of things like everybody else. But there is a whole lot jam packed into this episode. So make sure you listen to the whole thing where we talk about what you can expect moving forward. And we are just really excited to have you guys here. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our first ever podcast episode. This Let's is Adrian go. Monarchs. I am with my friend and fellow coach, Carrie Egler. And in this episode, we just want to introduce ourselves, let you know who we are, why we teamed up for this podcast, and what you can expect. So we're going to start just right out of the gate with our origin stories, kind of a get to know you, kind of, uh, you know, excerpt and um carrie feel free to jump in at any time uh if we want to you know if you want to ask any questions or sure. you know any any color commentary feel free to add in so maybe before i'll just you, get started before you jump into your story i want to yeah. say i'm also super excited to be here uh this is really cool i know we're you know you, you guys by this time you probably already know why we started this podcast and everything but man i'm just pumped to to be on uh be doing this with somebody who has so much experience such a great, you know, friend you become. And so I'm pumped to jump into it. And I want to learn more about your story. Maybe you want to learn more about my story. So that's going to be cool too. And uh, we also just want to say like, thank you for listening. It's the first episode and like we're uh, putting it on YouTube, putting it out in the podcast world. So wherever you're watching, uh, we really appreciate it. And hopefully you'll tune in for additional episodes. Yeah. And the feeling is definitely mutual, Carrie. Like, um, I'm, I'm so excited to hear more about your origin story as well. And I think, yeah. you know, our origin stories, hopefully this will help get people excited for where print on demand can take them and what they can learn from print on demand. And really the purpose of this podcast is just going to be to lead with value to just show you guys that, you know, people can do this, you're capable, and we're super excited to just roll out so many episodes full of gems. So um, all right. Well, I'll just jump right in in terms of my origin story. Um, so after graduating college, I was I felt like a corporate slave for many, many years. Uh, I felt very burnt out and just really stuck in the rat race and very unfulfilled with what I was doing, even though it was fine. It was good. I just it just there was something missing in my life. Um, and so I actually decided after a couple of years out of college that I wanted to do something completely crazy. And in December of 2015, I quit my six figure job. I sold pretty much everything I owned and I booked a one way ticket to Thailand where I lived on a small tropical island of Koh Samui for seven months. Um, I had always wild. dreamed. You are wild. Yeah. Man. Like, I don't know about you, but like I read this book, The 4-Hour Workweek, like 10 times. And every time I read it, it made me want to be that guy on the lawn chair on the beach with laptop in hand, like running his business from somewhere tropical. I was living in Vancouver, Canada, which was not tropical, very rainy. And I just wanted kind of that lifestyle. So I was like, you know what? Let's go. Let's let's do this. For so many years, I was too scared I thought I was, I was really scared that I was going to fail. I didn't think I had what it took. And eventually um, it just came to a turning point in my life where this was kind of a fork in the road and I could decide to continue down the comfortable path, which I had been going on or do something completely crazy. And I thought you only live once. So let's do this. So um, I just, yeah, I just quit my job um, I decided that I wanted to bet on myself and go all in on being an entrepreneur. Prior to quitting my job, I had dabbled in e-commerce selling on Amazon. So I sold some physical products on Amazon. 
Um, I also did Kindle KDP. I tried all these different things, just kind of like dipping my toe in, but nothing was really working out. So <laughs> what I ended up doing was quitting my job with really no plan, um, but to figure it out. And that was probably one of the riskiest, if not the riskiest decision in my life. But man, I absolutely have zero regrets about that. Um, I really had no clue what I was going to do, how I was going to make it work. Um, but I while just, you're really on that, wanted... while you're on that subject, yeah. let, me, let me interject a little bit there. I think it's, I just think it's so crazy. Like, like I kind of did the same thing. Like I kind of like jumped in head first, like not really a backup plan. And I'll, I'm sure I'll touch on that more later, but yeah. like, do you think that's the right thing for people to do? Like, do you think it's oh, the man. right decision to like, just like quit your job? jump into print on demand or jump into e-com or jump into like really anything starting a business. Like, cause I think yeah. there's, I think there's reasons why both are probably the right answer. Like stock up, yeah. wait, you know, do the safe thing, all the kind of things. But I don't know. What are your thoughts around that before you keep going? Man, that, that's such a good question. Um, I don't think it's for everyone and I, I don't, I, I want my story to be inspiring, but I'm not trying to tell everyone to quit their job today with no game plan and then just hope that things will work out. Like it was pretty stressful at the beginning, to be honest. Like I was trying all these different things. Things were failing. Things weren't working. And it was like, you know, I was I was living the good life in Koh Samui because I was living really affordably, like at a fraction of the cost that it cost me in Vancouver. And that was really nice. And that was helping me like financially. I did also save some money beforehand. Um, and that helped me as well. So short answer, no, I don't think everyone should do that. Um, I think people should have some plan or some idea. And if I did go back, you know, I was really inspired by this Tony Robbins quote. He says, if you want to take the island, burn the effing boat. And I was like, this is what I got to do. I just got to do it. And I just felt like I was never going to go all in unless I, I had no plan B. And that was kind of like my mindset. Now, um, I probably wouldn't do the same thing. I probably would have tried to start it as more of like a side hustle with yeah. the intention of eventually it becoming my full-time job. I think to go along with that Tony Robbins quote, like the, when I hear it, it gets me fired up. Just like yeah. I did you, but I'm like, yeah, like I think there's a magic in having your back up against the wall a little bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's been so many times in my journey as an entrepreneur, you know, over the last however many years that there's, I've been in a situation where my back gets up against the wall mm. and that forces me to take huge action. And then, yes. you know, I end up in a better place than where I, when I was, when I was kind of at that low place with my back up against the wall because it yeah. just forces you to take action and there's some magic there. And sometimes the greatest things are created when your back is up against the wall. And I think when you quit your job and you're just like, boom, it's time I'm going all in. I don't care what the circumstances are like, let's go, uh, man, yeah. there's some, there's a lot of times magical things can happen because as humans, like we're going to figure it out. Right. Like we're right. not going to, we're not just going to like, be homeless or something, you know, like, it's our instinct. Like, it's yeah, our we're going to, we're going to fight. And so yeah. there's some magic there, but keep going with your story, man. I love hearing it. I love that. Yeah, part. no, I, I a hundred percent agree. Like it, like I didn't have a plan B and that made me figure it out. I was watching my bank account deteriorate month after month and I was getting stressed, yeah. but I, I kept having to like pivot and try new things until I found something that worked. And then I doubled down in that. So I, I a hundred percent agree. Like humans are fighters by nature. Like, you know, if, if you don't have a plan B, I do think your chance of success are going to be higher. I didn't have anything that I had to fall back on. You know, it like, I, I didn't have my comfortable job that I had left. I had left it all behind. And so I was like hell bent on making this work. I was like, I'm done with the nine to five for the rest of my life. I don't want to do it anymore. It's not for me. And if it's for other people, that's totally cool, but it wasn't for me. And so that was like, I was like, come hell or high water, I'm going to make this work. And it did. So and you hear that story so many times. Like, don't you agree? Like so many entrepreneurs, their story comes down to like a story of survival. 
maybe and it might be in different circumstances a lot of people i'm hearing got laid off during like covid and they started businesses because why not like you know they they it's, didn't have a job and then it's they your started definition saying, it's it's your definition of survival you know what i mean for some people right. that mean that means a totally different thing yep. uh, you know for some people it's like i'm literally sleeping in my car fighting for food or whatever like yeah. that that's that's one version but there's it's whatever survival means to you. Everybody has their come their level of life that they're living at. And it's like when they dip below that level, that's when they get like panicky, you know, like I only have yeah. a certain amount of money in my bank account. When it dips below that, I start to panic and that forces you into action. You know, Yep, hundred percent. That was me. Um, it's like you go into instinctive mode, like, you know, like just, I got to like fight for my life here. Um, yeah. So so yeah, going back to my story, um, I I booked that ticket to Thailand. By the way, I had never been to Asia in my life. I didn't know a single soul in the country or even anyone in the continent. This was completely out of my comfort zone, but that's what made it like so exhilarating. I felt I felt alive and free at the same time. Like I remember there were days like I went to a gym in Koh Samui. I found a gym and I had a scooter rental. I had my apartment. And I would just ride my scooter along the beach with like the wind blowing in my face. And I was just like beautiful sunshine. And I, I was just like, man, this is what freedom feels like. It was like, I literally felt like I was living the dream. Unfortunately, at, at, you know, at the beginning, I didn't really have a plan. So I was like, well, this is what freedom feels like right now, but I'm going to have to figure this out if I want this freedom to continue. So Thailand is where I really started getting serious about figuring things out. And I started getting serious about e-commerce. Prior to leaving Vancouver, I was part of a really great mastermind group that met regularly. And one of the members was having a lot of success with Kindle Publishing. So I had him coach me on everything he knew. And he agreed. And within a few months, I was actually making some decent money. But unfortunately, my KDP account was terminated by Amazon with no reason. And there was no way I was getting it back. So I was back at square one, super stressed out and had to find something else. It was right around that time where I actually first heard about print on demand from that same person who coached me in KDP. And that's really where like my, my t-shirt and apparel journey began. So that mastermind buddy, his name was Matt, completely changed my life. Like I have talked to him numerous times to be like, I don't think you realize, like you changed my life. You're why I'm an entrepreneur right now. But essentially he was like a serial entrepreneur himself. He was a very successful photographer, but he always had like a side hustle and he always had really great ideas. And he was a very hard worker, very smart, very disciplined. And so he told me that he was kind of shifting gears from KDP um, I don't think he got his account terminated. I forget, but everyone was getting their accounts terminated around this time. So he said, I'm going to shift gears and I'm going to start an online t-shirt brand using Shopify, print on demand, and then marketing through social media. And I had not even heard of print on demand at this time. I didn't know what it was. And I, I honestly thought it was too good to be true. I'm like, there's no way that this exists. So I don't have to purchase anything. I don't need to print pack or ship any order. Like that to me seemed crazy. I was like, they must charge like a monthly or an annual fee. And it's probably really expensive because you're not taking the risk of pre-purchasing a bunch of blanks and then having to ship and print and pack them yourself. But no, it, it was the real deal. And really my goal of becoming an entrepreneur was always to create more freedom in my life. I wanted freedom of time, location, and finances. And since print on demand didn't require my physical presence and allowed me to achieve all those goals, it really met my criteria. And I got super excited and couldn't wait to get started. So since my last business had just failed and I was watching my bank account shrink, I was really excited by this opportunity. And another member of that same mastermind actually decided that she also wanted to hop on board and get involved. So we actually formed like a spinoff mastermind of the original one that was specifically for print on demand. Now, the first niche I actually started in was something that I had absolutely no passion for and knew nothing about. And Carrie, you talk about this. I love this. The three P's of selecting a niche, passion, proficiency, and profitability. I literally didn't fit any of those criteria. <laughs> like it was, it was destined to fail and it failed in spectacular fashion. 
I did a little bit of research. And what I noticed is that there was very little competition in the niche. And I was like, this is amazing. It's like a, a gold mine waiting to be found. But really, uh, it, it was there's a reason why there was like nobody in this niche. So now I know that that's a huge red flag. But back then, I thought it meant like a huge opportunity, right? So I was totally wrong. I built my store, threw up designs, started testing ads on social media, and just launched to crickets. And it remained crickets the entire time. Literally, like in all my testing, I didn't make a single sale. Like it was a total, utter failure. And then at that point, I actually decided to pivot and try my luck in a niche that I was much more competitive, but something that I was actually much more passionate about and knew more about since I actually identified with that niche. Um, and just for anyone who doesn't know what a niche is, essentially it's just like a subset of the population for a specific like good or a service or something like that. Um, so a lot of people might be in like the teacher niche or the fitness niche, maybe in boxing, maybe in running, something like that. Um, but I had not you know, before I thought that this was too competitive. Now I know that when you see competition, that usually means that people are making money in that niche. And I'm actually pretty big on, on going into the competitive niches because I started a second business, which was in an even more competitive niche, uh, which, which I'll get to in a second. So essentially after that huge failure, um, I decided to shift gears and try this new, more, much more competitive niche. And I wish I had invested in coaching right out of the gate because I would have learned a lot of things that I eventually learned when I did invest in coaching that would have saved me a lot of time and money. I made so many mistakes. I don't know about you, Carrie, but when I started out, I tried to teach myself everything through like Google and YouTube. And I spent so much time and there's just so much noise on there that I was trying all these strategies that weren't doing anything for me and were actually costing me money. So Anyhow, after that huge first failure, our mastermind actually decided that we were going to invest in training and coaching since none of us knew what we were doing. We were all totally new to this. And this was a huge pivot point in all of our success. And this is crazy, but essentially we, we joined a training and coaching program. I think we paid like $5,000 for our first coaching program. We actually joined multiple programs over a period of time, but the first one, I think it was like $5,000, which... And this program by today's standards would be like very subpar, but at the time it actually did change the game for us. Even as subpar as it was, um, the training and coaching got us on track. It provided us a very clear roadmap from an expert who was having a lot of success running his own print on demand clothing company. And we just really followed this roadmap. We followed the videos. We asked a lot of questions. We continued to meet weekly, like our little mastermind and get this within the first year, all three of us had built six figure brands. It's awesome. All three, like mine was eight months. It took me eight months to get my first six figures. And I don't even think I was the first. I actually think one of the other person, one of the other people is before me and maybe the other person was before me too. But like, you think that's a coincidence? This is not a coincidence. Like we invested in ourselves and it totally, I went from like total utter failure to having a six figure brand in eight months. And so awesome. I, I honestly think this, like so many people are capable of doing this. I always say like, I am not a guru. I am nothing special. I'm just like a normal dude who follows a roadmap and like invests in coaching. Like I still invest in coaching. I'm part of three coaching programs right now because I know I don't know anything. I know I can always get better and things are always changing in this space. So, so that's kind of how I got to making my first six figures so I was so excited by this that I actually decided to start a second t-shirt business again in an even more competitive niche um, using everything I learned through like coaching, training and testing. Um, so that business, I didn't work on as much. It was kind of like a side hustle for my main print on demand business, but still I was able to scale it to six figures in 14 months and eventually created a really successful winning design that made over $277,000 in 60 days. And that's just from that one business. If you looked at both my print on demand businesses across both businesses, I actually made a combined $400,000 in sales in 60 days. That's revenue, Let's by go. the way, not profit, 
but still four hundred thousand dollars in 60 days like i couldn't have dreamed of that when i first started like i remember my goal when i first started print on demand was a hundred dollars a day in sales i was like i man, if i could just get to a hundred dollars a day in sales like three thousand dollars a month that would be amazing and yeah, i remember that too just, yeah yeah like those early <laughs> and then i remember goals. the first thousand dollar day and i was like oh my gosh like that's when my world changed Totally. Totally. Like I, my, my goals back then were so small, but at the time they were super exciting. And I think a lot of people like, you know, like start small and build. Like I, I heard this quote somewhere, you, you, you climb a staircase one step at a time. And I think that's so true in something like this. Like I wouldn't, if I was just starting out, I wouldn't be looking at someone who's had like our level of success and be like, Oh, like, I want that right now. I'd be like, all right, let's, let's just like breadcrumbs, like baby steps on how we can get there. Set those hundred dollar a day goals. And before you know it, it'll be like a thousand dollars a day. It's just, yeah, it's just crazy. But, but yeah, right around the time. Um, so after I started that second business, right around this time, my mastermind members actually sold their print on demand businesses. So they all hit six figures. And then the other two sold their businesses and not too long later, I sold my second business. So the second kind of side hustle business, I sold that one so that I could focus primarily on my original clothing brand because I was much more excited about it. It was in a niche that I was more passionate about and identified more with. The second one, it was in the dog niche. And I just wasn't, I wasn't even a dog owner. <laughs> but um, like, I don't know, like I, I started it with my brother and he was a dog owner. So that helped a lot. Um, but I was just much more passionate about the original one. So I wanted to just, we sold that. It was awesome. And then I just focused on my other one. So since selling that second business, I've just been working on that one print on demand business full time. It's actually a hybrid model of print on demand and locally screen printed and fulfilled through a third party, um, logistics company. But we've been able to grow that to multiple six figures or multiple seven figures, I should say over the years. So that's, awesome, dude. that's kind of my story. Like, I feel like that was actually pretty long. So I, I'm going to stop talking now and I want to hear, I want to hear yours. Dude, I, man, what a great story though. Like, I just Thank love you. it. I love, <laughs> I love listening to like all the ups and downs of the entrepreneurial mm. journey. And it's, I, everybody listening, like we've in no way arrived. So hopefully, hopefully we don't come off that, that way. No. Um, yeah. We, we've both accomplished a lot, both you know, in e-commerce and just an online business and different things. And, you know, the podcast is just this outlet for us to, to help others and like share what we've learned. And like, I've become so passionate about, about helping other people and just sharing the knowledge I've learned. And that's why I have my YouTube channel, all that kind of stuff. I think, I think there's a, I think there's a tug on us as entrepreneurs to, to give back and give value and help others. And it's like, it's not all just about take, take, take money, right? Like I have this totally. drive to like make impact in the world. And so um, this is one way that we can do that. So uh, another reason I'm super pumped for the podcast, because I think everybody listening is just going to get a ton of value out of it. It's going to be awesome. But yeah, um, no, I, I totally agree. Yeah. In some ways, and, and like I didn't, I didn't talk about all the failures along the way. Like I talked about my one, I, I talked about a couple of failures, but failures, but man, there were so many more. Like yeah. this was not a smooth, linear uphill climb. It was like a peaky mountain that was just making exactly. its way up. And I'm still like, you know, we still deal with things all the time. Yeah. So I don't want people to think that this was some miracle, that this is out of reach for them. Like anyone can do this, but like if they have, you know, a roadmap, if they have the desire, if they have the commitment and the consistency, anyone can do this. It's not, yeah. it's not like you're right. Like we haven't arrived. We still have yeah. so much more that we're always learning and, and stuff like that. So yeah. hundred percent. Well, I'll jump into mine. Um, yeah. man, my story is like in some ways very similar to your story, but then in a lot of ways, very different. I think one of the ways that my story is really different is, um, that I had a family through all this, you know, like mm -hmm. it just, it just adds a whole nother element. So I'll have to mm. touch on that. But my story basically also another thing that's interesting as I'm kind of diving into this, I, I started in t-shirts and print on demand in 2017 in the summer ish summer to fall of 2017. But I had like, man, I had always had this drive to like be an entrepreneur and really just to like, I always knew that it was going to, it was going to be on the internet selling things. It's a funny story. 
that was uh in back in 2011 um the way that i bought my wife's engagement ring was i was flipping like cell phone accessories on ebay yeah what? Like, yeah that's like i would i would well and i would flip iphones off craigslist so i would buy okay. i would buy i would I would, I was working in cell phones as my full-time job, like selling cell phones. So I knew everything about cell phones. So I would buy iPhones off Craigslist and then I would flip them on eBay and pull, you know, 50 to a hundred dollars profit per phone. And then I would, I was buying cell phone accessories off of like AliExpress or something, you know, some mm. like website. And then I was like flipping them on, on eBay and, and, and on Craigslist too. Um, but I like saved up enough money from that, just flipping stuff on the side to like buy her engagement ring. That's insane. I always think about that. I don't, I don't tell that story, but that's like <laughs> the root. I, I, when I really think about it, I'm like the roots of my like e-commerce entrepreneurial, like all the way back that far, maybe even further than that. But, um, you know, you know, I was only like 22 at the time or something like that. But, mm. uh, so in 2017, I was, I was working in cell phones. I, I kind of worked up to a uh, management level. I was running the biggest store in my area. I had 16 employees that reported to me. I had two mm. assistant managers. Like I was kind of the head of the store and, um, we were, the crazy thing about it is we were, we were consistently, I think for three months running at that point, we had been the top store in our region in sales, like by a mile, like we were crushing everyone. Nice. And the way that I moved, the way that I moved up to that store, managing that big store was that I just, every store that I went to, I would turn around the store. They would bring me into the stores that were like doing really bad. I would mm. restaff the store and then I would like, I, I would build it up and it would become the top store. And then they would move me to a bigger store. And um, anyways, I say all that to say, not to be like, I was this great guy. I'd say that to say like, I had a knack for this. Like I, I, I was really, I felt like I was really good at my job. Mm. And, um, and I thought, I thought I was going to be with this cell phone company forever. Like I, it's funny the month before I got let go from, from that job, I was applying and interviewing for district manager spots. So I was going to move up to a district manager spot and, um, probably have to move my family to somewhere else. Like I had interviewed for Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and I was going to mm. be in charge of, you know, six or eight stores and it would be a six figure salary. And like, that was that was the path, right? Like great benefits, right. like all the things, like I was going to be there right. forever. And, um, and so basically what happened was I loved my job. It was great, but I was, I worked really hard, a bajillion hours at the time, 2017, my son was a year and a half old. My first son, well, I have one son, but I have a daughter as well, but my son was a year and a half old. My daughter was not born yet. And I, um, so I was working a lot of hours. It was a very hard job. It required a ton and some of my employees mm. were, I guess, doing some shady stuff behind the scenes. Like they were, you know, taking customers accessories and like returning the products back to the store and like taking the cash. And I mean, just some weird like stuff. And I, I really didn't know what was going on. And so mm. corporate security showed up to my store. They interviewed me, they interviewed my employees and my district managers ended up holding me responsible as the person in leadership. Uh. And so I was let, I was let go from that job. Technically I quit. Because I quit like before I got let go. I didn't want it on my resume or whatever. Sure. And, um, I know I'm gonna have to like wipe my nose in the middle of this podcast. A little bit of allergies. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. But um no so that happened. And so when I this is real life right here, man. You gotta, I mean, you this, gotta wipe this is real, right? man. This is real. this it's authentic. is yeah. <laughs> Side note, I just bought an end of the year tax write-off. I just bought this like grandpa office chair, like. I got a really good deal. It's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like a lazy boy. Like if you're watching on video, it's like this, it's just super comfy. And I like, it looks really stupid in the video shot, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna use it anyways. Cause I can sit in it for so long. Anyways, that's side. It looks it's super comfy. comfy. Got the it does. Chair. It is really comfy. But anyways. So anyways, got let go from my job. Didn't know what I was going to do. Thought I'm going to apply. I'm going to apply for more uh, cell phone jobs and do all this stuff. I had this friend that was already in this online world. He actually already had an e-commerce business, but he was also doing other things. Like he was doing client work. He was running Facebook ads for different businesses, blah, blah, blah. And he had literally been telling me for years, like, dude, you got to get out of the nine to five. Like you got to start, you got to do something online. You got to start an online business. And so I, I had this thought, right? At the day or so after I got fired, I was like, I should go talk to him. I should go talk to my friend texting him, set up a meeting with him. 
went up there and I was like, what do you think I should do, man? Should I go get another job? Should I, uh, should I do something online? And he's like the online guy. It's like, he loves right. it. He's all about it. And so he's like, you should definitely start an online business. And I'm like, all right, I got my wife. I got my son. I'm like, my wife's oh. not going to like this. You know, the <laughs> it's like, I could easily go get another like 60 to $80,000 per year job right. uh, working as like a store manager. But I, I wanted to do, I knew I wanted to do something different. I really yeah. think that as I was starting a family, like I really wanted more time with my family and I really wanted to set myself up for that kind of life. And mm -hmm. it's crazy. I'm kind of getting emotional already because I'm thinking about the life that I have now. It's exactly what I wanted to build so many years ago. You know, yeah. I mean, it's been, I guess it's been almost six years, getting close, coming up on six years since, since that all happened. But anyways, yeah. um, so he said this mentor guy, became a mentor. He was like, why don't you bring me three ideas for an online business? And I'll tell you which one you should do. And the funny thing is I need to go back through my notes. Cause it's probably like saved in like a notes app somewhere, but I don't remember what the other two ideas were. One of them was guitar related. Cause I'm a guitar player, some mm. guitar product. They might, I think they were all three e-commerce. I think they were all physical products, but one of them was a t-shirt store. I was like, I could sell t-shirts, right? Like t-shirts easy. Everybody wears uh, so t-shirts. Like, yeah, everybody wears. That's not going to change. Like, yeah, and I, I think I'd already had some. Exp I worked for a screen printer, like 2010, maybe. I worked for a screen printer briefly, mm. and so I kind of knew, like, a little bit of behind the scenes. I knew how you got t-shirts, and I knew, you know, what screen printing was and kind of how it worked. Like, I could actually screen print my own shirts if I had the equipment. So I was like, maybe I should do that. Um, and so I brought him these three ideas, and he was like, "Do the t-shirt business," and I was like, "Okay, t-shirt business." It is. <laughs> So at that point, basically what happened was I'm not working, right? Uh, I'm not working a full-time job, but I was going up to his office. He had this really cool loft office here in downtown Broken Arrow, which is a suburb of Tulsa. That's where I live is, is this town called Broken Arrow. And we have a little downtown area. It's like kind of trendy. And he had this like loft office that looked out over downtown. And I would go up there every day and I would sit on his couch. I didn't have a desk. I would sit on his couch with my laptop in my lap. And I would just work on my Shopify store. And mm. um, as you mentioned, it was it was like watching YouTube videos and just scouring the internet, listening. Oh man, I was diving deep into podcasts. Some podcasts I still listen to, like Steve Chu, um, who has my wife quit her job. Like, oh, oh my yeah, God. like I know yeah, that like, one. Yeah, um, I would listen to that one all the time. Some of the other e-commerce podcasts, like mm -hmm. just just trying to soak up everything that I could. And um, basically, what happened was. With the help of this mentor guy uh, that kind of helped me, he was like, you got to do Facebook ads. That was the thing at the time, the big right. hot thing. You know, I threw up some Facebook ads. I, I put $5 a day in. And, you know, after, I think my first store, I was drop shipping T-shirts from China. I picked a niche. Mm. Through AliExpress? I, yeah, through AliExpress. Yeah. I didn't even know I needed a niche, by the way, but I, somehow <laughs> I picked a niche. I started in the Oklahoma niche. So like, I, you know, we have the Oklahoma city thunder mm -hmm. and we're like famous for tornadoes and we have like the OU Sooners and different things like that. You know, they're kind of just like Oklahoma pride and, and, you know, that kind of thing. And so I started in this niche, just making little sayings and little, you know, things that were Oklahoma, Oklahoma people would know about. And I've lived here pretty much all my life. So I'm kind of ingrained in the culture. And um, so I put up four t-shirts. I found somehow I found some like kind of Oklahoma-ish designs on AliExpress, believe it or not. Wow. They were, I think they're around the sports teams and there was four t-shirts. I remember I had four t-shirts. I used the mock-ups from AliExpress. I put them in my Shopify store. There was no, there was no app to connect them. It was all manual. I put up these four things. I ran a Facebook ad for $5 a day. And like the second day I got a sale. Like, mm. Man, that's a good blown. feeling. I think oh. he bought two t-shirts. I think he bought two t-shirts. And so I'd spent like seven or eight dollars and it was like a $40 order. Hmm. My mind was blown, you know? And so, I, you know, I went back to my mentor and I was just like, dude, like what? You know, but then, then the, the, uh, then the struggle begins of like, wait, how do I fulfill this? Like, you know, so I had to figure that out. I ordered, I ordered the t-shirts off AliExpress. They took like eight weeks to get to it. Oh. And oh, this, like a month to two yeah. months always. And this, guy, brutal. this customer was smart. I remember he emailed me and he goes, 
man, you like, you must not be a very successful business. I just saw my order numbers one zero zero one. Am I your first order? And I was just like, I am so embarrassed. Like, oh, this sucks. And so the guy hilarious. just refunded. The guy refunded. He refunded the whole order. So I didn't oh. return the guy's money. So I'm like, my first order, I'm like, ah. I keep going with it. I get another order, right? And this guy actually waits for the items to get there. I Ali expressed them six to eight weeks. He gets them. He gets them and they're like two sizes too small. <sighs> it's like a t-shirt and it says large and it's like a small. Oh <sighs> like um, so this guy refunds, sends me the t-shirts oh. back. So, anyways, I, I'm making this a very long story, but basically the I struggle with like real. Express. Yeah, and, and my first two orders returned. Really, it was at that point, I was like, after the first two orders, that that earlier, I was like, I have to figure out something else. Like mm-hmm. AliExpress is not going to work. Mm-hmm. So I'm researching, I'm researching, I'm researching, I'm listening <clears> to podcasts. <throat> I hear about print on demand. I don't know where I heard about it. I don't know how I found out about it. Um, but I, but I, I found out about print on demand. Like somebody told me somewhere or heard it somewhere. And so I start researching print on demand. My mind is blown. Obvi- just like you said, I'm like, yeah. how? How can right. these companies produce all these items for me and I don't have to pay a monthly fee. I can do this for free, yada, yada. Yeah. And, and so I started making my own designs. I, I wasn't a designer. I didn't know Photoshop or anything like that. I just figured it out. You know, I was doing some stuff in Photoshop. I was doing some stuff on, you know, uh, online creators and different things like just like online software. It's just kind of any way that I could figure it out. The stuff I was doing in Photoshop was super simple. I remember mm. my wife, my wife was a, was better at Photoshop than I was. Like she had done some like graphic stuff in the past. So I would get her to make designs. I mean, like any way that I could. And I was just uploading it to print on demand, you know, putting it on my website and through mainly through Facebook ads, my business started growing very quickly. Like mm-hmm. I, be, maybe because again, going back to the three P's, mm-hmm. passion, proficiency and profit. Yeah. I'm an Oklahoman. Like Oklahoma is in my blood. You know what I mean? Like, I can talk to you about anything about Oklahoma because as you probably could about Canada, right? Like if I started asking you questions about Vancouver and different things like Vancouver. Yes. Yeah. You could, I could tell you everything about Oklahoma. I was born here. I was raised here. I'm an Oklahoma Sooner fan in my blood. Like I, you know what I mean? Like I love the Oklahoma city thunder. I've sat on my porch and watched tornadoes. Like I, I, I am in Oklahoma. So, so anyway, so I'm super passionate about it. I'm passionate about the people here. I know a ton about it, obviously, right? I'm proficient in it. Profit, I will tell you at the time, and I, you know, this is a little different today, but at the time, there were like, it was actually an opportunity that I saw, to be honest, because there was like four or five retail stores that sold Oklahoma merch that mm. were like doing really, really well. And I mm. knew all of them, but their websites were horrible. Mm. And I was like, I need to take this online, right? Like I need to do something online. I don't need a retail location. They were thinking retails the way I got to have these, these, these physical brick and mortar. So I took it online and I put my own spin on it and people just ate it up. I mean, just Oklahomans, like I was going to thunder games, Oklahoma city thunder games. And I would see probably every 25 people, I would see somebody wearing my shirt, a shirt. That's you know, thou- crazy. Like, thousands of people walking by you. And I, w- I would take my brother to the Thunder game, to a Thunder game, and we would be walking through the Chesapeake Energy Arena. And I would literally be going like this. Because uh, I would That's just see shirt crazy. after shirt. Crazy. And I, rem- I remember there were times, as like, it's weird. These are random stories. But I remember times being at the Thunder game and seeing like, like over there on the side, you know, like a hundred, a hundred, uh, you know, aisles away or whatever. And like spotting one, and then I would get out my phone and like zoom all the way into somebody's chest, like to That's take a picture. So funny. I just thought it was so weird. And and then there were other instances like that at you know trade shows and carnivals and different things where I would like see somebody wearing my shirt, which was pretty pretty awesome. And so, anyways, it, it I'm I digress. It blew up very very quickly through Facebook mm. ads. Mm-hmm. And so I remember my first month, I did four thousand dollars in sales. And my mind was blown. I was like, this is crazy. Second yeah. month, I did not second month. I did $9,000 in sales. Crazy. Third month. I did 30,000. I didn't think I did $28,000 in sales. My third month, wow. third month. And, That's crazy. um, this was around the holidays. So this was, uh, August, September, October. I think October was that big, really big month. Mm. And it was crazy is, um, that's when it, it kind of all started to fall apart. Basically mm. what happened was, 
I, I really didn't know what I was doing with Facebook ads. I was just pouring money into it. Mm. And I, I wasn't doing any kind of email marketing. I wasn't doing any, I just was like mm. Facebook ads making me money. And once the audiences started to dry up and like, I didn't know how to optimize. I didn't know how to fix it. I didn't know how to do email marketing. I wasn't collecting yeah. emails, yada, yada. Oof. It all just started to fall apart. Yeah. And so my sales just started like declining mm. until, um, it was really right around Christmas, which is odd to me now that I think about it. Cause it was the holidays, you know, but mm. it was odd it, right around Christmas. I, I kind of hit rock bottom and one part of that story that I didn't mention was, excuse me, when I, when I got fired from my job, it was like a week later that my wife let me know she was pregnant with our daughter. Oh, you no, know, I just stressful. lost my job. Yeah. I just lost my job. That's didn't know so if the business stressful. was going to work. And my wife was in her first trimester. So when all this was happening, the mm. business, you know, like fig, trying to figure out the business, but then it, it growing really big, mm. the emotional roller coaster was like on full tilt because we were really scared when we were pregnant, didn't have savings, didn't know how we were going to make money. But then once I started to make the money within the two or three months, I was like, back the Brinks truck, truck up. Where's my Lamborghini? <laughs> like I'm pulling $30,000 a month. You know, like I was pulling right. like 10 grand in profit. I'm like, this is more money yeah. than I've ever made in my life. And then within two or three months, it was like, holy crap, we're back down to Three thousand dollars in sales, two thousand mm. dollars in sales. I mean, it had completely crashed. I couldn't figure out how to make the ads work. I could, just couldn't figure out the ecom thing because I was mm -hmm. just riding this wave of Facebook ads, and um, and now it was like crap. Now I'm bringing home a thousand dollars a month. That's not. We can't pay for our child and for our mortgage and for our car payments and for our pregnancy. I mean, all the things you know, right, and, right, and utilities and cell phones and all the things that we have, and so um, super stressful. And that was one of the lowest points in my life because my wife was in such a, just a, you know, first trimester, second trimester, like she was just really, she was morning sickness, throwing up, couldn't really get off the couch because she was mm. pregnant. Plus we had our child, our son to take care of. So I was having to take care of him a lot, not putting as much time as I could into the t-shirt business. And, <laughs> um, and at that same time, it's like when it rains, it pours. Oh Yeah everything started breaking in our house. Like everything started breaking. Like our washer broke and our dishwasher broke. And like the AC wasn't working right. And it's just, I mean, our back room was flooding. We had this back room that just kept flooding when it would rain. It was a nightmare. And so like, it just felt like, I remember we had mice too. That was another one. We had mice at the Oof. time. It was just like, it was crazy. It was like, everything is breaking down. Mice are eating us alive. <laughs> They're not eating, but they, were, they were getting in our house, you know, like, so it's like all these things we had to pay for. We just had to pay for them, right? Like it's, you got to have a washer. You got to have, mm -hmm. you got to take care of the mice, right? So like mm -hmm. all this stuff. So we're just like credit carding it, just racking it up. I mean, it was, it was rough. Um, yeah. And the pregnancy looming. So I know I'm mm -hmm. elaborating on this a lot, but um, to shorten it up, really what happened is I kept, I just kept going. Like I didn't quit. Yeah. I, we, had, we racked up a lot of credit card debt. Um, what I did was I started driving for Uber. I started uh, doing Lyft and Uber. I started selling some of my stuff that I had, just valuables. But I was driving for, I, I would I would basically work on my t-shirt business from like during the day, really. Um, and then I would go drive at night. We put our son down mm. and I would go drive from like 7.30 or 8 until like 2 in the morning to just wow. make extra money. You know, my wife wasn't working because she was pregnant and she hadn't mm. had a job for a while because my my old job was, well, I was getting paid well, you know. Mm. And, um, so I, I just kept going, I kept hustling, finding different things. And so, um, what happened was uh, slowly over time, I just started to figure out this e-commerce thing. And I took a course, um, I took a, I took a course that was just on e-commerce. It wasn't a print on demand or a t-shirt course. And I followed that course, like to the T everything you would teach. I would, I would do it. I would go do it. And my business just started to, to grow and started to kind of come back. And I eventually was able to grow that business to bigger than it was before and had yeah, months that awesome. far eclipsed what I originally did and uh, had some amazing moments. And it was through, you know, learning a lot more about advertising and how to make that profitable and mm. different platforms, different strategies. The big, maybe the biggest one was email marketing, right? Like yeah. incorporating Huge. email marketing Huge. and yeah. starting to build that list <clears throat> and, and then, built my list big enough to where it was like 
even if I don't run ads, I can still pay my bills with just driving the email list. You know what I mean? Right. And and then and then I think the third is the power of upsells, like mm. learning how to drive more additional revenue, increase my average order value, get people to spend more. That was a huge key. Those three things, you know, uh, I think were were the biggest things that helped me grow my business. And so, um, fast forward to to kind of wrap this up. To fast forward to. September of 2019, it's a couple of years after I had initially, uh, two and a half years or so after I initially got fired and started the business and everything, really felt like I had this drive to help others. All, all of my, all of my friends were like, "Dude, you're making money with t-shirts. Like, can you teach me how to do that?" You know, and I was like, "I mean, yeah, I'm doing really well with t-shirts, but like, I was kind of like, yeah, you, you don't have what it takes. Like, you won't." <laughs> you won't actually do it. You know what I mean? Like I could teach you, but you won't actually do it. And, um, and so in, in September of 2019, I started a Facebook group, a free Facebook group. I started posting in other groups. And what I did was I started going live in that group every two times a week. Mm. And I was just sharing what was working for me. I was sharing strategies. I was sharing, I wasn't Journey. holding anything back. I was just sharing, sharing, sharing. And then within a month I launched shirt school which is an online course and a community. And there's a little bit of coaching and different things in there. And I launched shirt school as an online course to help other people do what I had done, right? Build a t-shirt business, all the lessons I'd learned, I put into shirt school. And now we're over three years into shirt school. And we've been able through our launcher brand challenge, we've been able to reach somewhere around like 30,000, 35,000 people have gone through our launcher brand challenge. Jeez. We have, close to a thousand people inside our shirt school course. And we have somewhere around 2000 members across all of our print on demand and t-shirt courses. And it has been an amazing journey the last three years. Like we've helped so many people, but I think for me, like there's just so much fulfillment in being able to share these wins with others, mm -hmm. being able to see others succeed and being yeah. able to play a part in that. I in no way think that I'm like a guru or like, I have all the answers or that I'm the reason why a student would have success, but mm. being able to be a part of that and share in that success and hear those stories and see how yeah. it's changing other people's lives, man, that's, that's where the real fulfillment comes in for me in totally. doing this. So, and that's why we're here on this podcast, right? Like, yeah. Um, so that's basically my story. That's, and, that's um, an awesome story. That is super inspiring. And, and, you know, kind of what you said about like not being a guru and whatnot, like there's this really good book called um, uh, Building a Story Brand, I think. I don't know Donald if you Miller. read it or not. I've read it a couple of times. It's really good. But essentially what it talks about is like, you know, like it, as like a coach or a leader, you are the guide and the student has to be the hero. And I really, truly believe that, like, you know, we're both coaches and we don't tout ourselves as these like genius guru people. We just, we've, we've tested a lot. We've been doing this for many years. We've seen success and we just love and are very passionate about, about sharing that with other people. But you're totally right. Like anyone who wants to get into this, they're going to be the hero of their story. We're just going to be the guides. And so um, I just think that that's, such a great analogy for kind of like e-commerce coaching, print on demand coaching. Um, you know, when, when you have successful students, it's like, don't look at me, look at you, look at yourself you in the it, mirror. Man. You're the one yeah. that made all this happen. I handheld you, like I guided you, but you have to be the hero of your story. I did not run your ads for you. I did not build your Shopify store for you. I did not market for you. You did that all. Um, and I, I just it. think that that's really powerful. I, I wanted to touch on a couple other things too, from your story. So first of all, like, man, like having a family changes everything. Like I'm, I'm married now. I love my wife. We don't have any kids yet, but like back then I was with her. We were, you know, she was my long-term girlfriend at the time. And that's actually what brought me down to Phoenix. I live in sunny Scottsdale now. I love it, but that's what brought me down here originally. And that was the fork in the road that I talked about where she had moved down here to go to grad school. And I was in Vancouver working my job, which I was in real estate sales. Like I could not, not be in Vancouver. I had to be there. And so I was at this fork in the road where it's like, I can either stay here and she's going to be gone for at least four years and we can try to make it work. Or I can go down to Phoenix and be with her. 
And that's when I decided to like take the plunge. If she didn't actually move down here and I was stuck with that decision, I might have never left. And I might still be working that same comfortable job. But the, the reason I bring that up is because you were married with a kid when you did this. I honestly don't know if I would have had the like courage to do that. I was like, you know, a bachelor, even though I was in a, a relationship and whatnot. Um, and it, it seemed like it seemed easier for me. I feel like if I had a family, I would have thought even more about it. So kudos to you, man. Well, I don't even know I, just, if I had the courage to do that. Like the, what, as I was thinking about it during, when I was telling that, like it, it, I can really, I'm a pretty emotional dude. I can really take myself Damn. back to that time and like feel some of those feelings. And man, it's me and my wife have been through a lot as far as that. Like, I mean, we were never like borderline homeless, but we were definitely putting everything on the credit card, sure. uh, credit cards for a long time. We had good credit, luckily, so we could like open new credit cards and that saved our butt so many times. But, yeah. um, but we've been through a lot and, you know, I, I credit her so much for like believing in me and letting me like live out my dream. And, yeah. you know, I just want to say again, I don't want to sound like guru or toot my own horn, but like the life I get to live today, I, there's no way I would have it if not for those times. Right. And built and mm -hmm. figuring out learning everything that I learned and going through those tough times. That's what got me to here because I was building something. And when I was, when I was building my first t-shirt business, I had no idea that was going to lead me to shirt school and being able to help other people do it. Thousands of people. Right. Like, but now what I learned in those tough times is what is helping give me the life today that I have. And we just, we just have such an amazing life where I work for myself and we travel pretty much when we want. And I spend time with my kids when I want, I take days off when I want, you know, those are the things that I always dreamed of having. We're just like those simple, I just want to, if right now in this podcast and just go, you know, look at Pokemon cards with my son, like I can do that or whatever, or play catch <laughs> with my son or, you know, spend some time with my daughter. She loves to do art and different things. Like I can do that. And that's the life I get to live today. So it, it really is awesome. Yeah, no, that's, that's really special. That's, that's really cool. And I really like your story. I think it's so much more relatable when there's struggle involved in the story. And it's not like I want people to struggle. You know, I'm an eternal yeah. optimist. I, I love to support people. I don't want to see people struggle, but when there's a struggle, it just seems more relatable. And like you had makes you so much stronger. It does. Yeah. And I almost feel like it like increases the gratitude as well. Like I struggled so many times and like even over the years growing the brand to seven figures, like still there were like really low, like it's like peaks and valleys, right? There were really low times. I, I had like a total breakdown and maybe we'll have to do an episode on mental health in the future. But in 2019, I had the lowest, darkest time in my entire life. And I'm not going to expand on that right now, but this was when, you know, when I had my teacher business and like some people thought like, oh, this guy's killing it. And I wasn't at that time. I was actually really struggling mental health wise. And my business was even struggling at that time. Like it's peaks and valleys. So yeah. to hear this, the story of the struggle and people coming out of it on top, like I love hearing that. And there's so many more stories out there. And I'm sure we're going to have a lot of future guests on the podcast where they'll tell their story of like struggle to triumph and and continuing to have like those peace yeah, and valleys for sure. But um, yeah. Uh, okay. Well, why don't we kind of shift gears here now that everyone hopefully has an idea of who we are. Let's talk about two other things, why we teamed up and what people can expect from the podcast going forward. People are probably, well, I mean, maybe most listeners don't know who we are, but we are two print on demand coaches with two different coaching programs. People are probably like scratching their heads. Like why? So why are they doing this together? Aren't they competitors? Like, shouldn't they just be doing their own podcasts and like, fair maybe. enough. But, <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe, maybe you're right, but I don't know about you, Carrie. Well, actually I do know about you. I'm all about collaboration over competition. Yeah. Like there is enough, just like print on demand, there is enough for us all. Like I want other people to start print on demand brands, even in my own niche. I don't care. Start it. And if you have success, 
good for you. I want to see people win. And I'm the same as a coach. Like, I, I think this is so cool. We want to do something that we don't think has ever been done before. Different print-on-demand coaches with different perspectives coming together and collaborating to create the most informative, insightful, and impactful print-on-demand podcast out there. That's kind of like what what I was thinking. And we even have a third coach as well, um, who we'll surely have on at some point. That is my brother and business partner, Carlos, who is super knowledge knowledgeable in areas that I am not. Areas like accounting, finance, legal, business, startup, logistics, SEO. He's he's like the smart one in my family. Like there's four boys in my family. He's the smart one. I, I, I like sales, marketing, product creation, branding. I'm passionate about that. He is much more on like the back end of things. So, you know, three coaches all coming together, collaborating to create one, hopefully like my goal is really to make this the best, undisputably the best print on demand podcast in existence, like out there where we just lead with value. That's my mantra, lead with value. I, you know, I think we've agreed that that's kind of the mantra for this podcast, where we're just going to share everything we know. We're going to share tips, trips, tricks, hacks, everything to get people fired up about print on man, to inspire them and for them to get results. Um, yeah. Well, I was going to add like, yeah, collaboration over competition, you said. And I just think that when, you know, people come together and we bring all that knowledge together. And we, you know, we, we bring everything that we've learned over, you know, you have right here, us three, you know, over 15 years of combined experience and print on demand. Yeah. How much more can you as a listener learn when we team up and we talk as opposed to just one perspective and one right. person's experience. Right. And I just think you're going to learn so much more uh, from us both being here and also Carlos coming on and guests that we have on rather than us just trying to go it alone. And sure, there might be some advantage to doing that. I don't know, but I think the advantage is way higher of what we can offer, the value we can offer when we come together. And me and Adrian just become friends over the last couple months. I had him on an event of mine and I just thought, awesome. man, this guy is like not the guru Lamborghini trips to Dubai guy. Like he's like a normal dude. He's relatable. And that's how I try to be, you know, like I don't try to be flashy or anything like that. And I want to work with people like that, that are down to earth, mm -hmm. that are real, that, you know, and maybe mm -hmm. on this podcast, we'll talk about some of the struggles, right? Like maybe we do yeah. an episode on the struggles of being an entrepreneur, you know, being a kind of a solopreneur, those kind of things, because those are mm -hmm. very real. Um, but you're a real dude. Like you're not just, we're both not now. You just had surgery. Like you just had surgery. Yeah. I just had, uh, my son just had a surgery. I just had three Christmases with different families that I, I, I wish I want to just like, I want to move away to Arizona or <laughs> spending too much time. Like these are real things, right? Like we're not yeah. just whatever living on a beach. So yeah, um, yeah, that's why we teamed up. And I think we, we have cool. so much to offer to, to you guys as the listeners that we're going to be jam packing these episodes full of value, full of tips, strategies, all you mentioned it hacks, all the things that we can, we can offer you. So you're going to learn a ton. Yeah, I I also want to mention that you know our background is predominantly t-shirts and apparel and print on demand, but really a lot of the strategies we're going to talk about they should work for other a lot of other you know non-t-shirt and apparel print on demand businesses or even t-shirt and apparel apparel business businesses that aren't print on demand. I want to talk about social media marketing, email marketing, like all these different strategies that. It doesn't matter if it's just a print on demand, you know, uh, clothing business. Like we are, we are, we are eating our own dog food in the sense that we're niching down. Like as yeah. a podcast, we we're like, you know what? Print on demand is what we know best. It's where most of our experience is, but we also have a lot of experience in other things. Like I have, my business isn't fully print on demand. It's a hybrid business model. We do local screen printing where we send it off to a warehouse in Texas. We're a third party fulfillment called Rakuten Super Logistics ships it out when customers order it. Like, you know, other other things like we both sold physical products that weren't clothing. Yep. And a lot of the strategies are more like e-commerce, like the marketing especially is going to be more e-commerce specific. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, 
there's a lot of people that do t-shirts and apparel, but they like print from home or they have them locally screen printed or something like that. Those people are going to get a ton of value out of this. So maybe the ma name is a little bit misleading, but that's really the niche that we are sticking our flag in or planting our flag in, but there is going to be so much more than just print on demand. I love it, dude. Yeah. I love it so much. So, well, I think that unless there's anything else that you have carry, I think that's where we'll wrap this episode up. I mean, I just think I was going to say like, you know, we're going to be releasing podcasts every week. You know, we're, yes. we're, we're trying to build this, this, uh, catalog up and, you know, put out a lot of content. So a new episode each and every Friday is what we're, tr what we're planning to do. And so, um, you know, make sure, make sure that you subscribe, like subscribe, whether it's on YouTube, turn on the notifications. If it's on the podcast, you know, subscribe here and, um, leave us a review. If you feel like leaving us a review, if you like this first episode and you already want to say it's awesome, go for it. But that would be awesome. <laughs> when we you're listening be... to this, we should have a few Very more good. episodes out already that you can go check out. So I'd encourage you to go check out the other episodes that are already out and, um, and tell us what you think. Leave us a comment, review, those kind of things. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. We really appreciate you. We're grateful for you. And we are so excited. She's continuing bringing you massive, just massive value. See you next week. Take care. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Print On Demand Playbook Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode and you got value out of it, please leave us an honest review on whichever platform you're listening from. We are so grateful for you as a listener. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next one.